Well, the wait continues for the release of the highly anticipated integrated resource plan aimed at clarifying the country's electricity plans. The draft document was meant to be released last night. Now, environmental rights group Greenpeace Africa is challenging Energy Minister Jeff Hadebe to deliver renewables in the wake of the country's energy crisis. Now, the organization's climate change and campaign manager, M M Melita Steele, joins us now in studio to chat about this. Melita, so great to have you sitting across the table from us to discuss this issue. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for First of all, we can't even start to have this conversation without elucidating our viewers what the integrated resource plan is all about and how it affects the ordinary man. I'll let you start. So something like the integrated resource plan, as you say, can be something that people don't really haven't heard of before, don't know how it relates to them. It is essentially the country's electricity plan. It sets out the investments that will be made in the electricity sector for the next 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, you might ask, why is that important? Because the price of electricity is important to everybody in this country. So at the moment, we have the last time the integrated resource plan was uh, finalized was in 2012, 2011. It's supposed to be updated every two years. So the reason the price of electricity is escalating as much as it is, is because of the investments that were decided on in the IRP in 2011. So if we want more affordable electricity, we need this, this plan to come out based on the latest information and evidence and making rational choices to give us affordable electricity. Okay, I like that term, rational choices. First of all, there's no secret that uh, this um, integrated uh, resource plan has been delayed, uh, hasn't yet been released yet. Why is that? I think that's an excellent question, and that's exactly the question that Greenpeace has for the Minister of Energy, Jeff Khadebe. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually had three energy ministers in the last year and a half. Each energy minister has promised the release of the IRP, and not a single one has delivered. Um, I think the, the fact that coal and nuclear are in the plan as it currently stands, the old plan, um, there are vested interests that believe that they should continue to remain in the electricity plan. And so as long as it's in the current plan, um, the investments can continue to be made. Okay. And so, yeah, we're really saying that it's urgent. Um, the people of South Africa can't afford to wait. And we're calling on, on the Minister of Energy to be the first minute minister in a year and a half to actually deliver the plan. Okay, so unpack how this IRP affects green green Greenpeace's climate, climate change and your strategic plan. So climate change is the long-term warming of the planet, which means that the, the average temperature is going up. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason it's going up is because of the burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Not only do they pollute the atmosphere and damage people's health, but they're actually contributing to climate change. Um, and what happens with climate change is you have extreme weather events. So uh, climate change tripled the likelihood of the drought in Cape Town. Um, which was pushing towards day zero. Um, you see floods, you see fires, you're going to see uh, sea level rises. And so if we're taking climate change seriously, mm -hmm. then we need to shift in a just transition away from fossil fuels mm -hmm. and towards renewable energy. And almost all of our electricity comes from coal at the moment, mm -hmm. more than 90%. And so what Greenpeace believes is a rational plan would look at the least, the cheapest source of electricity, which happens to be renewable energy at the moment, um, and would not put limits on that renewable energy. So at the moment, the current plan puts significant constraints on renewable energy, which then allows expensive nuclear and dangerous coal to fit into the plan. So we believe that if, if we want to act on climate change, which the South African government has said that they do, then we need to invest in renewable energy. And it offers massive opportunities, both in terms of job creation and also a better and more socially just future. Right. I know there, there are lots of hurdles and setbacks to this. Um, the vision is 100% renewable energy. Uh, is there a target date to uh, achieve this, um, given the hurdles and challenges that, that we're facing? So. Ten years ago, there was almost no renewable energy in South Africa. It is slowly picking up. Um, but according to the Paris Agreement, which is a global climate agreement um, where governments agreed to act on climate change, by 2050, 
we need to be as close to 100% renewable energy as possible. And it is possible, it just needs the political will and the investment. Okay, so are there any pilot programs in, in place that can currently demonstrate uh, that re renewable energy is the way to go? So there are a number of renewable energy projects across South Africa at the moment. That are um, successful? That are successful, that were delivered on time and on budget. I think one of the complications with those projects is that they're private projects. And so one of the things that we need to see in South Africa is that we have socially owned renewable energy projects. Greenpeace would love to see ESCOM start to invest in renewable energy. Um, uh, ESCOM at the moment only has 100 megawatts of, of wind in, in the um, grid. And so we would like to see a better ESCOM that shifts away from coal and towards renewable energy. Um, and the private projects are showing that it can be done, but it must be done differently at a different scale. Everybody has a rooftop. Um, and if the barriers were removed, every house, school, community, church could install solar panels and could become an electricity producer on their own. Yeah, I guess you've answered my next question. I was about to ask you what initiatives uh, can be done or implemented to, to get it moving faster. So I think that's one of the, the big barriers to renewable energy is there isn't an incentive, mm -hmm. particularly for rooftop solar. So that is something that is completely decentralized. If solar panels were affordable for ordinary South Africans, um, then there would be a massive uptake. We would start to produce our own electricity. But there must be the right kind of incentives in place um, where you could feed electricity into the grid and be paid for it and still be able to use electricity from ESCOM. So those are the kinds of things that need to be um, put in place. But the IRP also sets the trajectory. So if the IRP has a very ambitious goal when it comes to renewable energy, then that's what will be implemented. At the moment, we're really not ambitious when it comes to renewable energy. Well, speaking of that, where, where does South Africa rank with other countries in the world? Well, South Africa has some of the best renewable resources okay. in the world. So if you compare South Africa to Germany, which has a massive uptake of renewable energy, we have significantly better solar radiation and also wind resources. So we're in the top, like, 20 countries when it comes to renewable energy. We just need to, potential, we just need to um, have the political will to back it. Okay, let's say uh, renewable energy is 100% successful in South Africa. Where does that actually leave the role of ESCOM when it comes to power? Well, I think ESCOM's role is really interesting at the moment um, because what we're seeing is a utility in a death spiral. And almost all of the electricity that they produce comes from coal. Um, so coal is a very contested issue in South Africa because there's an issue of job losses. So if we're shifting away from coal, that whole sector has to change and transform. Um, but ESCOM is in a major financial crisis at the moment. They have aging coal-fired power stations that need to be retired in the next, like, less than 10 years. And so if they want to be a utility of the future, mm. then they would immediately start to um, invest in renewable energy. And Greenpeace has been pushing ESCOM yeah. for years. Mm. So that's what we want to see. Okay. Let's say I gave you five minutes with Energy Minister Jeff Hadebe. What's the first thing you tell him? Five minutes. Well, what I would tell him is that we really believe in the potential that he has to create certainty in the energy and electricity sector in South Africa. But he cannot, he must back up what he says with action. Mm -hmm. So he has consistently said that the integrated resource plan is really critical, that it's important for policy certainty, important for investment. So now deliver the plan, give us the plan, show us that you can lead, and really in that plan, be rational.